<sighs> One of the great things about being on the road is that you get a hotel room completely to yourself to help you get over working with other people. Today, we're gonna help you get even better at working with other people by talking about communication on The Smart Show. You have to be careful what you say in business, and sometimes how you say it is just as important as what you say. So today we're gonna to talk to Dr. Lillian Glass, who's an expert on body language. So let's talk about body language. What can we learn from it? You can learn everything from body language, but it's not just the body. The body language just tells you one thing. It's the facial language, facial expression, it's the tone of voice, and the content of what is said. And the more cues we get, the more we know. For example, if you wanna know if a person likes you, look at their feet. Are their toes pointing in your direction? If they are, they like you. My toes are pointing in your direction. And mine are pointing in yours, so I like you. Well, thank you. So here we are. <laughs> okay, all right. There are other things you can tell. If a person's lying, what they're doing, if they're blinking a lot, if they're licking their lips, if they're looking away, if they're shrugging their shoulder. So it's not just the fact that someone shrugs their shoulder and all of a sudden they're lying. You have to look at the whole picture in the context of what is being said. Mm -hmm. So if you ask somebody a poignant question and they go, well, um, I don't know, mm, chances are they're lying. Okay. Also, touching the nose, touching the eye, touching the face, scratching. Why is that an indicator of lying? It's because the autonomic nervous system is kind of working overtime. Capillaries move here and there, so blood flow changes, and so sometimes there's itching and scratching. So it's involuntary a lot of times. Because it's involuntary, the body doesn't lie. The voice doesn't lie when it cracks, when you repeat things. They're telling you volumes if you really pay attention. Wow, Dr. Glass, thank you so much for your it's time. It's been a pleasure. Need more advice on how to read people in the office? How about how to make candles? Because honestly, you can find all of it at ehow.com. How do you beef up your resume? How do you make a report longer without adding content? Even, how do you look taller? You can find out at ehow.com. Do you have issues with your boss? Are you the boss and maybe you have some issues with yourself? How do you maneuver around office politics? Well, today we're at the USC School of Business to talk to a business communications expert and try to find out some answers. Let's go. So let's just say I'm a brand new employee coming into an office. Okay. What can I do to try to fit into the political structure and how can I figure it out as quickly as possible? And the first thing that you need to do is you need to listen. You really need to figure out the organizational culture and also start to try to find pockets of influence around as well in an organization. So you kind of need to just listen for, for a while just to get the feel of the organization, understand the organization. The reality is that doing a good job now, it's not enough. You have to do a good job, you have to communicate that you've done that job well, and then you have to communicate it in an organizationally appropriate way. Because oh, the reality is if you don't play the political game, you're, you're going to be left on, on the sidelines. You know, it may be a necessary evil, but on the other hand, it can be a vehicle to do great things in your career and advance yourself. Okay, so there you have it, office politics and body language, which I found very interesting. So much so that I'm going to try out some body language right now.